I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Tom, this is business, and this man has taken it very, very personal. Who's being naive, Kay? We've known each other many years, but this is the first time you ever came to me for counsel for help. So, you know, uh, there should be a show on the internet. It's just two guys talking about The Godfather. That's great. Yeah. Just two guys who love The Godfather, who do nothing but talk, talk about, about The Godfather. Talk about The Godfather. Debate it, argue, point stuff out. They might like a story like that. They just might. talk for a while you relax you make them relax then you get up and you go take a leak or better still you ask for permission to go and when you come back two shots in the head apiece you come out blasted he didn't come out blasted no he came out and he stood there for a few right. minutes he did the opposite of what Clemenza exactly told him. you know when I first saw the movie I thought he was gonna shoot them from standing up at right, the table. you think if, the, if that at first, he, oh, he's just going to pull the gun out and he's going to blast them. Exactly, because that's what he said to do. But he oh. sat down. I think it seems to me like he's girding up. And instead of, he's making a decision in the moment, a split second decision, like, all right, you know what? No, I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to pull the gun out and kill him. I'm going to go sit down. But what I'm are you gonna, saying? He was savoring the moment? Savoring the moment. Uh, he didn't want to, he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't want to rush through. I know it sounds weird, but it doesn't, like the way it funny, plays though, out. I didn't read that from him because of the look on his face where he was so intense. Right. It was like he had to build up to that moment because he knew his life was going to change forever. His yeah. entire life up to that point. He's been kept out of the family business. Exactly. They sent him to school. He joined the army on his own. He's a real civilian. He's not Michael Corleone no. yet. He's some guy that he's pissed off because they shot his father. But the reason why I said what was going on in his mind was so chaotic, because even the use of sound by Coppola. Right, the train is That awesome. screeching train right. sound was like piercing. Which almost sim symbolizes him exactly. building up, building it up, building it up, and then. He shoots Salazzo twice. I mean, he, he shoots, shoots him once, once, but he shoots McCluskey twice because McCluskey punched him in the face. That's, that's my right. theory. Exactly. It's like, oh, I will shoot you twice. That's true. He, yeah. You know. you know what? I mean, I was, yeah, that's an interesting point because I wasn't sure if he missed him the first time, which was the special I mean, effect. That too. was an incredible, incredible shot. The bullet going through the cop's neck and breaking the window behind mm -hmm. him. It's interesting the way he falls forward on the table yeah. when he gets shot in the head. I mean, the awkwardness when he finally does it was great because you could see almost, again, you can interpret this however you want to interpret it. Is he trying to remember what, what did he say? It almost looks like he goes, oh yeah, drop it. Because he's, he's holding it up here and then all of a sudden he just goes. And he like drops it, he from, drops up it like here. from up here. Coppola was so great that even in the scene in the bathroom when he's getting the gun, how he just didn't walk in and oh, there's the gun behind the thing. At first you're led to believe, oh my God. You, you, you know, he's so good. You really think maybe it's not there. And maybe. if it's not there, what the, what's he going to do? Was he betrayed? Yeah, because it's right, not there, right, right. You know right. what I mean? He had behind to be behind it. it. We'll yeah. put the gun behind it. Yeah, what was Tessio a Jew? Yeah. Well, again, you know, we talked about the deal. What did Michael, what, what, what would Michael have thought about the deal, uh, the Salazzo deal? Salazzo wanting to get the, the Don and the Corleone family into the drug business. You know, was that a smart move, business wise? Santino. What do you think? There's a lot of money in that white powder. That was that. It was a smart. It move. was a smart. Move. And I think that if you're Michael, cold hearted, you know, cold -blooded. he wasn't ready to understand that yet because all he knew is they shot my father. That's it. I want them dead. All Salazar wanted was right. a truce, and then well, they all would have made money. You know, we were just talking about it two two minutes ago about how uh, how. Sonny says, you know, this is strictly business and you're taking it very personal. Very personal. Blah, 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 you know. And then of course there's very, very emphatic Pacino, Michael Corleone says, no. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. But again, is it? I don't know. I don't I, I think that he would say that 
and you, you're led to believe that. But I think that he really, really, he's, he, somebody shot his father. He, he wanted to exactly. avenge I mean, that. Exactly. I believe he's, he's saying the truth about it is business, but they got the underlining thing with his father being shot. Right. One last thing about that scene. When the waiter brings the antipasta, mm -hmm. What, what movie? What movie? You know, blows you away on every level and makes you hungry. The Godfather. Right. Julie and Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my two hundred. <laughs> <laughs>